I want to welcome us all, especially those of us who are here and those who are watching us through the TV, the social media like Facebook, I believe YouTube, um, to this Sunday, again, um, a beautiful day that you are celebrating in uh, Crisco City Church, uh, Karibuni. Today I want to share something. There are things we do as a nation, as Kenya, and the topic of my type of my talking today is about living godly lives in a pagan society. Living godly life in a pagan society. We are going to read First Peter chapter 2, verse 11 to 25. I believe when you get the signal back, you'll uh, take us there. I hope the system is working. If you are with me, open First Peter chapter 2, verse 11, 25. Now, um, I don't know what the, there are various definitions of a pagan nation of people. We may call them people who do not know God, a society that totally depends on other things other than God, the true Yahweh we know. They may also be living on other people. Now, this nation called Kenya, as you know it, when people took statistics, there's one time they said that we are 80% Christians. But I'm afraid. The things we do as a nation uh, begs. You wonder, is that true or not? And I propose, although we are saying 80%, very few of us actually live as Christians. Of course, the other 20% belongs to people we call Muslims and people who do not believe to any other religion. In the recent past, I'm aware you have heard, you have heard people in social media, TV and the like calling themselves atheists, meaning they don't believe in God. Uh, it sounds dangerous, and indeed it's dangerous. We take it as it is. But I want to prove to us in a little while that we are a pagan nation. And how do you live in such a pagan nation? Um, my wife was sharing with me something she learned in Bible study about the salt. You know, the Bible has talked about we need to be salt of the earth, isn't it? She reminded me that uh, so long as salt is still in its vessel, you can't enjoy it, isn't it? Until you take that salt and put it in what you are eating, most of the time, in our case, vegetables and also meat, you are putting it in what we are going to eat, which is not salt. That's where you test its sweetness. But supposing you tested the sweetness of, the goodness of salt, in the container where salt is. Will you enjoy salt? No. no. You are a Christian. If you remain in the church here, if you remain in the church and live the lives we are living in the church, we are like salt in its container. We need to be out there in the population that does not know God and influence that population until it has its test, the test God wants it to be. Are we together? Yes. Praise God. Amen. Now, may we read the word I had just prepared us to do? That's First Peter, chapter 2, verse 11, 25. From verse 11. Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may, by your good works, which they observe, glorify God in the day of his visitation. Therefore, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether to the king or supreme, or to governors, as to those who are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers, for the praise of those who do good. For this is the will of God, that by doing good, you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men, as free, yet not using liberty, as a cloak for vice, but as bond servants of God. Honor all people, love the brotherhood. Fear God, honor the king. 
Now, I took that because that part of the Bible is telling us how to live a victorious life in a pagan society. And I've just been telling us that uh, there are things that convince us that as much as we say we are 80% Christians in this nation, you may also safely say we are living in a pagan society. I have named a few things that today, this morning, I just wanted to share with you or remind us, we all know this, that I make our living as Christians questionable. One of them is this. We are practicing a lot of idolatry. Idolatry in this nation. You know, the word of God says in Exodus, if you may recall the commandments, you shall have no God, no other God before me. You know it, isn't it? And God is jealous. The moment you put in another God, you are not with him. When we read quickly, uh, even uh, Colossians 3, 5, it tells us, therefore, put to death which am um, to death your members which are on earth. It says, fornication, uncleanliness, passion, evil desires, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Idolatry in many forms. Some people may imagine that when I said idolatry, I meant those things that Indians have kept and put in there in their temples. It's far beyond that. Those things that we do that God has abhorred, they are all summed us as idolatry. In Colossians, he has tried to name some of them. They include fornication. They include uncleanliness, passion, evil desires, and covetousness. This is idolatry. Do you practice them? Yes, that is idolatry. And we are commanded that we should put to death. The second area which I see as Kenyans, and when I mean Kenyan Christians, those who are born again, I've seen them practice with my own eyes, is corruption. Corruption is so rampant. Uh, during this week, one of the articles, I don't know elders whether you read it, this weekly uh, magazine, it put aside uh, 364 uh, billion Kenya shillings that this nation has borrowed this year alone from China. 364 billion. But the writer was saying this money had been meant for development ventures, particularly infrastructure. But you find that a lot of it probably a third of it, a third to be exact, is not used to the purpose in which it was meant to be. It is used to, to offer bribes, to pay for kitukidogo, my cut. You have heard me mention about the 10%, isn't it? They are here. And the people taking those things are you and me. Wapi kitu yangu? Chaya waze iko wapi? You ever heard of that? Chaya waze. Even church, chaya waze wa kanisa iko wapi? Hmm? It takes another form from where I stand, and I don't know whether some of you have received there, and you happen to be in a position to give jobs. You get presidents asking you. They know they have somebody who doesn't, who has not done well, but they're asking you, Meaning, ignore those who have performed well and put this person there. The other place that really disappointed me is you get brethren here, I don't mean here in church, but I mean in our Christian world. They're asking you to cut corners. For example, a job has been found. Um, and this I have a problem even in my own family, at home, and my fellow Christian brothers. They don't want you to take the stairs. They want you to give them the job. Do anything you can to make sure they are there. Yet the procedure says people must be employed on merit. 
you must be ready to go the rigors of applying, you go the rigors of being shortlisted, the rigors of doing an interview, and then if you do well, go through it. People are not ready. You find them coming through and saying, Chukulie, mtoto wangu. What I want to tell you is, there is a godly way of doing it. Qualify for it. And I'm asking the church here, please take your children to school. Let them have the certificates. Let them do interns. Let them get the experience. Don't shy from applying for jobs. Don't shy. There are many Christians who tell you, ah, because it's squeezy, it's an attacker with you. Don't they say so? Lie, the lie of the devil. Me, I've looked for my jobs, but I only know one person. Who is that? The Lord God. If you talk of knowing a minister, there's a minister in heaven. So don't shy that you don't know anybody. You know somebody. You know the biggest person. You know the topest minister. Don't you know that person? So apply and tell the minister, I've applied. Where when you find any? Nitete. There are jobs. And go through those rigors. So don't look for shortcuts. And I tell my people, take children to school, train them, stand with them, trust God. Even if you go and you find their bribe, water on a bribe, work your application in. It will come out. So don't shy. So I'm saying, as much as you may say, we and you are not practice idolatry. How about you? We are so ready to bribe when it comes to traffic police. When we are the one who has driven very fast, you are beyond 50, isn't it? And you are ready to bribe. Don't do it. Just go through the system. Pay the fine. Mungu Praise God. Be patient. God remember, tell God, forgive me. I drove very fast. If they can have mercy on me, so be it. But if they don't, pay the fine. The other third aspect I'm seeing here, and you may have heard it in the recent past, there are a lot of murders happening, especially of young people. Uh, maybe where I work, we have had some few students who have been killed in circumstances I can't even explain. Um, there are young spouses killing each other. You hear a young man killing his wife. They are knifing them and all that. Does that concern you? It concerns me. We are asking what's happening. We are saying we are a Christian nation, but these are happening. You find probably something to do with a lot of jealousy and envy. The Bible tells me when I read chapter 4, verse 1 to around 15 there in Genesis, this is the story between Cain and Abel, isn't it? These people had been given the same opportunity. They went out there. They were both farmers. One is a farmer of crops and the other one of livestock. You, you know they were all farmers? The oldest profession on earth. You know, legal people have forgotten that there are some jobs which have never changed. They are godly. Farming was one of them. And all, all even uh, um, to do with the, uh, what you may call it, uh, uh, things to do with the judges, magistrates, and all that. That has been with us eh, over time. But let me go to farming. So Cain was farming crops, while Abel was farming what? Livestock. And there came a time when they needed to offer. There was worship those times. And it came through offering. So the man, Abel, came to God and he gave his best. Took the best animal. And when he sacrificed, the answer was straight. But you know what happened to Cain? He just took some, the Bible says, some of his crops. You know when you say some, it means you have not collected quality. You took anything and anything you saw in there. And you are not even caring, you are not concerned with what was happening. So he was not honoring God so well. So when his sacrifice went, 
the fire was not recognized. As I paraphrase. So he became jealous and envious on his younger brother. And what happened? He murdered him. So you may say, it is Cain who had that heart. Don't you see we have those kinds of hearts even at this point? Your brother is doing well. My brother Jeremiah here, whom God has blessed to be a pastor amongst us in the making. Praise God. And you wonder, will I ever be like this person? So you start feeling jealous about it. Pray for him. Stand with him. Your brother may be blessed with an international job outside there. Sort of being jealous over it, looking for all things to pull them down. And we Kenyans are specialized in this. We don't need to. Praise God. We need to pray for others and not practice jealousy and envy. These are the things that pull us down. Some people have been blessed with wealth, even in a clear Christian way. You start calling them all names and all sorts of things. We don't want to harbor those kinds of hearts because it will lead to murder. It will lead to all kinds of things and they are happening in this nation. The fourth one in my list is what we call oppression. We are really oppressing others as Christians. I included. This is how we do it. I want to start from home. We have workers called <laughs> maids. If you recall and check how you give them work, they wake up very early. They take care of your children. They wash your clothes. They make for you food. They stay with you during the day. You go to work, come back. Mara, you are seeing them working hard. But at the end of the month, how much do you pay them? Praise God. How much do we pay them? Very little. And some of us don't even appreciate their presence. You are silent on me today, isn't it? But this is the reality. We practice it. God is saying we begin from there. Those domestic workers. Can we make sure they do the right things? Can we make sure we pay them? Do we make sure they rest? Can we help them? You know, it is just because of that external work that God has given us the grace to have them in the home. Otherwise, those chores, it means we do them. Mother, father, and the children. We have done an embarrassing thing in such a way that we have allowed even our children, they press those maids. Instead of them doing their works, they go to the maid. Simbochin mm -hmm. is Not only those, even our workers in the farm. Yes, there's that normal salary you give our workers. But you find we are also paying them peanuts. They do a lot of work. At the end of the day, you do very little. We are enslaving other people. Our work, at our workplace, we don't listen to their issues. If you are in charge of a place, you don't even take care of medical of people. We don't stand with the poor. There are so many orphans and widows amongst us. I just want to challenge you. Do you have a widow in your life that you are helping as a Christian? A widow. Those people are there. A widow is somebody who doesn't have, particularly one who does not have a job. She has nowhere to look for. Do you know there are many widows out there who need your help? They don't have to shout. Apart from widows, orphans, there are young men and women who do not have anybody to take care of them and we just look at them and go. Can we begin to worry about them as Kenyans? Finally, but not least, we are not taking care of our own our own, our own. One of the things that I mentioned a few days ago, not here, but in another place, um, I was introducing my students to a course called nursing, but I said we are not going to do nursing like anybody else. 
we need to specialize in an area that's unique in this country, taking care of the aged. Many of us visit our parents in Ushagowa, I don't know how often, maybe once in three months, there are some people whom I was mentioning to, very young ones, that they saw their parents last year in March. Corona is the excuse, that's why they have never gone there. They still imagine their parents to be strong, the way they were when they were children. That they go to the river, they get their own things, they take care of their food, they are muscular, they all... Forget it. When people are old, they need you. Not you needing them. Sorry. They need you. We need to take care of our aged. So I was saying our, we do a unique area. Nursing and taking care of the aged in society. In Canada and USA and the you have heard about Europe. At least they have nursing homes where they go. But in this society, we don't. Can we begin taking care of our aged? Can we take care of our parents? Not only those, even our own children. We have ignored our own children. We bore them. Some of them may be staying with you or away, but we don't take care of them. We have left them to the world. Let's take care of each other. We were taught the other day, I don't know whether it was here, I believe so, who is a good neighbor? The neighbor, isn't it? You remember the neighbor? That story uh, whereby you had a Samaritan moving along the road and they got a Jew who had been injured. A priest by, passed by. Uh, a Pharisee? I trust so. But they ignored this guy. And who took care of this person and took him to the inn? It was a Samaritan. Now I wanted to say, can we have the Samaritan's heart? <laughs> I mean... Can we take care of one another? We are not doing it. So are we really a Christian country? We are practicing, finally, I'm on this. Others, I've learned them as others. A lot of tribalism. Right now we are going to elections. We are busy saying, for example, in my community, I want to talk to you about the Western community. They say, Bona mungani pomoja, mukakua kitu kimoja. And then you produce one presidential candidate. And we say, huh? These guys are weak. I say, shame on you. That is tribalism number one. That part of the country is behaving very democratic. Anybody in this country, you can get votes. That's how we should be it. I say it without blinking. Go home, sell your ideas. Listen to them. I don't want to elect you because you belong to my tribe. But what are you going to do to the nation? You hear what I'm saying? So Westerners, don't be embarrassed. You are the most democratic part of the country. And that's what we need to do. Welcome anybody, whether it's from central, from coast or what. They are Kenyans. Love them. Let them sell your ideas. Choose them because of that, not because they belong to your tribe. I said, I'll mention others. Others include immorality. I was in the church that kept on preaching four times that women must keep on putting on long dresses because if they put on small ones, they'll be exposing their breasts their, their thighs, their what? Uh, to me, I lived in Canada whereby people would go more naked than that. That does not scare me. I look at them as my daughters and sisters. I was wondering, the guy, gentleman who was talking, he was a man who has preached to him that you should not put on, you know, you, when you put on trousers, you are exposing also your thighs to people. You are tight trousers. We are not preaching that. So stop preaching though. The reason is because this mind, this person's heart is just immoral. They are imagining other things when they see their sisters. Please treat your sisters as your sisters. The elder ones as your mothers. Honor them. You won't see those things you they are talking about. Because you have honored them, isn't it? So when you see them, respect them. There's a lot of drunkenness, 
sorcery and all that. So I'm saying we are living in a pagan society as a nation. So what do we do if we are living in a pagan society as a people, living in a challenged society? There are a few things we need to do. Number one, <laughs> the first thing that I think we need to do for this nation is continuously pray for this nation. What are we praying? That this nation returns to Christ totally. The word of God, you remember it as it was paraphrased in either Matthew 22, 35 to 40, or Mark 12, 28 to 34. It says, you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your energy, and I'll add on, with all your time, with all your children, with all your money, with all your thought. God wants us to be dedicated to him completely. No other God. So as much as we live here, can we practice that? We need to love the Lord our God with all our hearts, with all our minds, with all our soul. The word of God says again, we should strive to live Christian lives in what I'm calling the marketplace. The marketplace is not in church. I know in church we have no problem. We live Christian lives, isn't it? But after you live here, how do you live? If we go to what we read, chapter 2, verse 11, it tells us, Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. We need to abstain from sinful desires. Our presbyter, the other day, uh, he reminded us of how Jesus was tested, especially after fasting 40 days. Uh, when the devil was testing him, he was very hungry, isn't it? And he was telling him to command the stone to be bread, isn't it? Uh, then the, the other test, when he took him to a high place and told him to, um, I think, what was it, the second one? The pride of the eye, um, that if he, um, if he, I, I believe, when he took him to a very high pinnacle and told him to watch all over, and he said, I would give all this to you, but what do you do? You must worship me, isn't it? And that, so he was tested on three things. The last of the flesh, the last of the eye, and the pride of life. We are always being tested on these things. All of us, wherever we go. First of all, the last of the flesh. The last of the flesh coming in on the things we desire. Maybe you lack food, but do you want to use ungodly means to get food? Maybe you lack money to do some things. Why do you go solving it with it? I know there are those of us who love going into churches where we are going to be preached that if you do this and this and this, money will multiply. Huh? I love this song which says, uh, when you love the Lord God, it will give you a double portion. How do you go? Does it go? The Nigerian one. Everything? Double, double. When you sing this to a very young mind, those who have not been in Christ, they think the reason they go in church, that day they will go out and when they come out, what will be the answers? Everything is? Double, double. Is that true? No. Just love the Lord. Maybe the grace for you that day is that one piece of bread. God wants us to control ourselves in those things. You should love the Lord your God alone. Hmm? You should not put the Lord God on the test. 
The other one. So, in brief, God is saying we control our lives as Christians. Maybe you are seeing your brother. They have just been blessed and they have a beautiful house in Rwanda. And you are going to church with this person. You may begin being jealous and envious and wondering, Kwani, this one is worshipping which kind of God that I'm not worshipping. Don't worry about that. Pray for him. Let him live a good life there. But God will also remember you. In your own time, in his own situation, only be what? Patient. The other thing we lack as Christians, as much as you see that other person blessed with those physical things, is the working ethics. We don't have. You cannot get anything alone unless you cast your seeds on water. Isn't it? Um, also, if I might paraphrase this, not rightly, that you may have to plant your things in different things. There are those who plant in the morning, those who plant during the noon, those in the afternoon, and those in the night. You never know which one will come out, isn't it? It just says from morning to evening, what would you be doing? Working hard. I'm talking to particularly men here. Don't sit home even when they tell you, this is Mujengo side today, Hakuna Kazi. Don't go home. Look for another one. Maybe at noon you'll get it. And work. Stay focused. Work. If you are doing a business, don't worry on how you failed yesterday. Try again the next day. Try it. Try that. Don't go home and put your hands together. Kimbo. There are very many men who instead of working hard, they are looking at their wives. The wife wakes up very early in the morning, takes care of the children, goes to the market there, picks a few vegetables and fruits, she comes on the roadside and starts selling. The sun beats her down, and she has been abused by people the whole day. Uh, she does all that, then in the evening she comes home, she's taking care of the children, and you, you come home and say, where is Nyama? You have, brought, no, you have not brought those things home, but you're asking for meat, you're asking her to take care of you, to bring you water, to do all kinds of things. Is that fair? We need to work hard. I know you men, you are silent on me, but I'll just say it anyways. God expects us to work hard. A little sleep, a little slumber, and poverty does what? Creeps in like a thief. How many hours do you sleep? How many hours do you sleep? Well, biologically, they are asking us to sleep up to eight hours. But many hard-working people, I know even in this room, they sleep between four to six hours. Is that correct? They hardly go to bed before 11. And by 4 a.m. or 5, they are awake. Spend an hour with the Lord before they start doing their work. When you see them coming out, going to the vehicle and all that, half of their job is already done. God expects you to work. We need to be a hard-working people. It is Christian to work. What was Paul doing? As much as he was a preacher, praise God, Paul preached you guys. If you look at the map in Europe there, just check it quietly. This guy moved from Israel, went along the Mediterranean Sea to Italy, to those places. He was working hard. But every time he reached somewhere, he would remember his tool. Attend Mecca. As we preached in the marketplace, as we are out there, let's be seen to be hard workers. 
if you are in charge of a place, arrive in time. You should be the first person to be in the office. Pray there. They should know that my sister always arrives in this office. Ten minutes to eight. And before she does anything else, what does she do? She prays. After praying, she works so hard. And what time would she leave? She would be the last person to leave at five. And if there's work to be done in the office, she stays there and works. Why wouldn't God bless this person? Do you know what we do? We arrive in our offices late, maybe nine. By ten o'clock, we have worked, done some work there, then take a seat somewhere and we are busy basking. We are watching where the Minyapara will come through, where our boss will come through. We are not working. Then by three, we are finding out where our boss is so that we can do what? We go home. Who is cheating who? Can we set a good example out there in the pagan world? Maybe when they just see that, they will know a Christian works hard. A Christian is somebody you can depend on. A Christian is somebody you can trust. That's how I want to be. Praise God. Amen. And the other thing that we need to do, we still need to set a good example amongst us. If you read verse 12, it says, having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may, by your good works, which they observe, glorify God in the day of visitation. The Bible says among the Gentiles, but I add on, even among those who are saying they are Christians, we need to show a good example. For example, when it comes to the issue of bribing, <laughs> they should see you going through the stairs. If it's a job, work your, your way out to get to the top. Don't show shortcuts. I'm told there are some jobs in this country which people know that before you get it, you must part with some kind of money. Around 150 thousands. People know that. It's happening in this country. You don't have to. Don't bribe your way out. Traffic has held you because you are driving very fast. Huh. Pray quietly. Maybe they may just forgive you. But if they are too hard, then you have no option. <laughs> Go to court and pay the fine. Be ready to do that. Sometimes God wants us to pass through some hard things. Do you know they harden us? Just read Isaiah 43, verse 1 to 3. What does it say? Verse 1. Chapter. Isaiah 43. I think so. Verse 1 to 3. It says, But now, thus says the Lord, Who created you, O Jacob? Isaiah 43, verse 1 to 3. But now, thus says the Lord, who created you, O Jacob, and he formed you, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. You are the Lord's. Fear not. Amen. Are we? Now follow what he says. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. He's not saying, I'll protect you from the waters. He's saying, when you pass through the waters. Meaning, we must pass through the waters. But what's more important here? God will be with us. My brother and sister, God will be with you. He says, again as we go down, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. The rivers will not flood you. Surely you pass through the rivers. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be consumed, nor shall the flames scorch you. My brother and sister, I fear even saying those because I don't like the fire. Are you ready to walk through the fire? 
It's hard. But the Bible is saying, <laughs> when you walk through the fires, meaning there are fires we must walk through. It is scary, but it's in the Bible. God will allow sometimes trials to pass away. But this way you just have to surrender and say, God, here, I have no choice. I have to trust you. You remember uh, the four Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, isn't it? They were tested and told to renounce their God, but they said, <laughs> and the fire was put there, which was so hot in a furnace. At the end of the day, they told the people, this is one thing we know, that our God is going to deliver us from that fire. Don't we know that? That should be our testimony. The Lord will deliver us from the fires. That's the good news. But, this is also another but, but there are times, but even if it doesn't deliver you, what would you do? Does he, does he stop being God? No, he remains God. And the reality happened. They were eventually thrown in the fire, but the Lord God was with them in that fire. So I'm praying to you, my brothers and sisters, take courage, even when fires come, when floods come, as a nation, as a people of God, trust God. He'll be with you. Go with him in those trials. They are not easy. It's not good music. It's not peremende. It's not everything double, double. But trust in the Lord and go through that. Yes, we need to. The fourth thing we need to do, living in a pagan nation, we need to submit ourselves to every authority instituted amongst us. There are several authorities which have been instituted amongst us. Uh, if you recall in the recent times, and you check uh, what the judiciary has passed over the presidency. Sometimes it's a mockery. For example, you had a judge saying the president must sign a certain document within 14 days. It baffles me. How do you tell your authority to do things in a certain time? I question myself, did we write the, the right constitution? So even if your authority have done wrong things, handle them with care. To earn a blessing, me I'm for a blessing, I will always honor my authority. I don't know how about you and me. Can we be a nation that honors authority? I'm not saying you take on the sinful things, but you do what? Honor the authority. I was meditating on this. Remember Nehemiah in the Bible? What was his job? What cup was he bearing? He was serving wine to the king. And you think the king was normal the moment he took wine? The king would be drunk. By the way, some of you, I know, there are many Christians who hide behind wine. They think wine is not an alcohol. I want to submit to you, look at the contents. When you take a glass of wine, you are a bigger drunkard than one who has taken those, those other things. I've, I've, let me not mention them. Nehemiah was serving wine to his boss. But he would not expose him. He protected him. Is that true or not? So, it, what I'm trying to say is that some of us have been even employed in homes where I know, like for example, Indian homes, they tell you to polish their idols. What do you do? Does that mean you are not worshipping them? Just do the job as you cast that thing in your heart. Pray for them to open their eyes and know they are living God. Isn't that true? Don't be embarrassed. So what I'm saying is that find a way of dealing with your authority 
and respect them as a nation. We shall be honored. Let's obey our spiritual authority, especially in the church. Some of us have lost there. For example, others wonder, like when you have given your 10,000 as 10%, you start looking on how that money is going to benefit your pastor, the elders. They are just going to pocket, isn't it? You don't know what you are talking. So we must submit to our own authority and begin taking care of our very own. Of our very own. They leave us, they live here. Number five, we need to be servants of God. Wherever we are, what we are doing, we should not be looking at how much do God get behind it. By the way, if you are numbering them, number one, I said we need to be a nation that takes Kenya back to God, to love the Lord God with all our heart, with all our soul. Then number two, we need to strive to live Christian lives in the marketplace. That's wherever we go and do businesses. We need to live a Christian life in the marketplace. Number three, we should live godly lives amongst ourselves and even the Gentiles. We should set examples. We should be ready to go through the way. Number four, we submit ourselves to every authority instituted among men. We submit ourselves to every authority in, instituted among men. Number five, I'm saying we need to be servants. Let's emulate that example of Jesus. When he, uh, he knew his days were going to the end, he, uh, during the Last Supper, there are the versions which tell us that he took water in a towel and a towel and was washing the hands of his uh, disciples. What it means is that we need to portray examples to serve people, to serve humanity. That should be our goal. Whatever little we have, can it we share? I want to go quickly with the rest because time has got us. We need to, I've already mentioned this, but I need to repeat it again as the last one. We need to pray for these nations. Number one, praying for their political leadership. You wonder, is next year's elections part of your problem? Yes, it is. God is expecting you to pray for this nation, that we have peaceful elections. Pray for this nation. There are some parts of this nation that are suffering from hunger. If you are not aware, there's a drought in the north. They announced a place yesterday. I think, was it Marsabit or where? They were having wrong news for them that it still remain dry. Livestock are dying and all that. We pray against hunger. Let's pray against disease. Although it has reached 2.5%, we are a miracle-believing country. Can God deliver us completely from COVID-19? Until we are delivered, it goes to zero. We are also complaining about poverty. Can we pray for the economy of this nation to grow up? Because when the economy grows, whether you want it or not, it means jobs for our children. Jobs, opportunities for you to do businesses. Pray for those things. Let's not shy about it. Let's pray for peace at the marketplace where you are working, that you will have peace in whatsoever you do. Pray for this. And finally, let's pray for many of us, for many Kenyans. It is, I don't know how to praise, pray, paraphrase it, but God's desire to see that everybody in this nation is done what? Born again. That should be always our goal. It doesn't matter how rotten we are born, how murderous we are. Can we pray for salvation of all? So my brother and sister, I'm urging us, let's do something different in the marketplace. Let's do something different different in the marketplace. In the pl Praise God. I wish to end there. So can we stand and pray? 
We thank you, Father. We bless you. We worship you, Father. Father, I know at the beginning of the year, you gave us a theme, oh, Father, that we shall be, oh, God, oh, God, you are going to take us, oh, Papa, and make us, oh, God, to move in another direction, oh, Father, as you commanded us, oh, Papa, that we shall pursue, overtake, and recover all, oh, Father. Father, we cannot do this if we do not live lives that are worthy before you, God. We pray as a nation, oh God, we are claiming to be 80% Christians. Yet, oh Father, if you test us, we are not measuring to what you've said to do. May you command us to live rightly lives, oh Father. Father, we are renouncing our idolatry. We have served other gods other than you. But we know you are a jealous God, oh Father. You have commanded us to only worship you and worship you alone, oh Father. You have again commanded us to love you with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind. Father, may that be our attitude today. May that be our attitude. May we serve no other gods other than you, O oh God, we pray. We pray, Lord God, remember us today, Father. Father, we are living lives that are very questionable. We are practicing corruption. We are practicing bribery. We are practicing all kinds of th sorts of things. We do all extortion. We do all right, wrong examples of Father. Instead of waiting on you, we want to take the shortcut. Father, tax us as a nation that we be a people who trust in you, who trust in your way, who are looking at your Father. Forgive us for engaging in corruption. We are praying today, Father, that you remove the murderous spirit from us, remove the jealous spirit, the envious spirit, that murderous spirit that led Cain to murder his brother Abel. Father, we do not want to participate in it, but we pray today, change us, O oh God. May we not be oppressors of those below us, including our very own workers, including those in the family. Sometimes even as our young ones, we are pressing our parents, expecting too much on them. Father, we pray today, we'll be not oppressors, but we'll be take care. Father, may we take care of our nation, for especially those who are in need, especially the orphans, the widows, we have neglected them. Father, may we go out and do that. Remember, we have even ignored our parents, who are aging, we are not worried of where they would get food, of where they would get medication, of where they slept, of their health. Father, may we change our heart and do things differently. Father, we are practicing tribalism in this nation. Everything we do, including politics, including what we do, we are doing poly tribalism. Father, remove that spirit from us. Remove even the spirit of nepotism. Remove the spirit of immorality may not even be mentioned in our circles. Father, we repent of drunkenness. We are drunk on wine. We are drunk on power. We are drunk on other things. May we drunk by the, be drunk by the Holy Spirit than these things, O oh God. Papa, help us as a nation. Help us, O oh God. We are tired for this. Father, may we do things differently in this country. May we dedicate our life to you completely. May we love the Lord, our God, with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, with all our strength, with all our energy, with all our finances, with all our time. May we love you, Lord God. May we not love any other God but you alone. Father, may we live lives that may be emulated by others in our daily lives. Oh, Father, help us, oh God, to overcome the lust of the flesh. Help us to overcome the lust of the eye and the pride of life, O oh God. May we emulate the example of Jesus when he was on this earth. He was a humble person who lived, O oh God, a humble life and waited on you in all things. May we practice this, O oh Father. Lord, may we live godly lives amongst ourselves and even among Gentiles so they may see our example and emulate you. Oh God, may we trust in you even when we pass through some tests. Father, we have lost you when you have allowed some little floods to us. Oh God, we have run away from you because of that. 
because, oh God, we are not deep in you. We pray that we may grow in you, Father, that we may be able to trust you even when you are plus passing through floods, when you are passing through rivers, when you are passing through fires. May we trust you that they will not swallow us, oh God, because you are with us. You will be with us in that fire, oh God. Oh Lord, may we be with you. May we trust you, Father. May we trust you. May we submit to every authority that you have instituted on earth. Father, to the king, to the governor, even to those who are on authority. Oh God, in our workplace, may we have submissive hearts. Father, we have been disobedient in the past. No wonder we have suffered. No wonder we have gained curses. The worst being, we are not submitting to the authority in the church. Lord, we have disappointed them. They are not here today. They did not send me. But I feel, Lord God, we have left them to live lives that are very hard. May we remember those we are spiritually below them. We pray for them. Father, remember our presbyter. Remember Mama Pastor. Remember oh God Apostle Das. Remember Mama Das. We are praying that you also allow the elders, even those who are in this church, those whom we have not served and been authority to God forgive us forgive us, may we pray for them may we pray for them those who have need oh God may we take care of it may we ask ourselves that elder what need do they have where are they how do they sleep, Father may we pray for them, may we stand for them oh God it's our duty you expect us to do it oh Father Father finally you allow us to be summons just like Jesus did. May we serve you. May we serve this nation. God, we are going to different, to different politics. We are praying, Father, that you may take care of the politics of this nation. Yes. They are taking step and step higher, oh Father. We are praying for peaceful campaigns. Yes. We are praising, oh God, for embracing. May the people be able to sell their ideas in different parts of the country and we have a peaceful election. Father, we pray that you also may put in us a working ethics in country. May we be hard workers in this nation. Finally, Lord God, we pray, is a desire that all men must be saved, oh God. May we go to this, oh Father. May we be disciples of all in this nation. May we be disciples where we work. May we be disciples in our home. May we be good example by discipling you, God. Oh, we are praying for salvation of all. Oh, thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. How we bless you. How we worship you. Father, I pray that you may be with your children today. Papa, they raise up here. May you meet them at the very point of need. As we prayed earlier, Father, may you meet them at the very point of need. Those who are unwell today, we are trusting you that they are healed. The widow, the orphan who is amongst us, Papa, you are husband to the widow and father to the fatherless. Remember them today. Stand with them today. Stand with them as they go wherever they are going. Do not leave them. We are praying for that drunkard. We are praying for that murderer. We are praying for that fornicator. May they know Jesus Christ. May they embrace him today. God, we are praying for them. It's your desire that all are born again. We are praying today, Father. You may be with the other president and mama as they travel back to the city. Be with them. Father, may you meet at the very point of need. There are those who need shelter. Papa, answer them. There are those parents who are looking for school fees. Answer them. There are those who are trusting for jobs. Father, may you answer them. There are those who are businesses. May they attract customers. Father, we trust you in all things. Receive the adoration. Father, we just want to magnify your name. Glorify your name, for you are worthy to be blessed. You are worthy to be magnified. In Jesus' name I pray and believe. Amen. Hallelujah.